and we welcome you, yes you, to another Great Day TV show. We have an amazing show today. Lots of interesting things happening because this is our 100th show. Get that, 100th show. We thank, thank you, thank you, and thank you, and thank you very much for staying with us and helping us and enjoying our program. So we're gonna take a look back at some of your favorite stories as presented by your favorite reporters. Stay tuned. And one of our favorite stories, just a few months ago, I got to ride in a Studebaker. David Arland has a Studebaker, and he took me for a ride. Time for a little history. What was Studebaker? Studebaker was an American wagon and automobile manufacturer based in South Bend, Indiana. Founded in 1852, the family firm was originally manufacturing wagons, buggies, and carriages. Studebaker entered the automotive business in 1902 with electric vehicles. The first gasoline automobiles fully manufactured by Studebaker were marketed in August of 1912. Want more info? Well, meet the Studebaker enthusiast and owner and his 70-year-old automobile. Dave, we are here today so excited and I promised you I wanted to do this for over a year or so. You have a Studebaker, a car. You don't see them like this anymore. What, what tell us about the Studebaker? Well, I remember way back in the 1980s, there was a campaign to promote Indiana, mostly to people from Ohio and Illinois and Kentucky, called Wander Indiana. Wander Indiana, Wander Indiana, Wander Indiana. And it had sort of an earworm of a song. Uh, that you just it drills into your head. But it, it had a Studebaker driving through the state of Indiana on its own, and it was visiting all the sites. So that kind of, you know, piqued your interest. It did. I was like, what is that car? What is the, the it's got that unusual, it looks like an airplane on the front end. Like, <laughs> oh. what is that? What is it? The color, look at the color. I won't touch it. Dave would slap my hand. And the thing in the middle, what is that? So that is designed to, to look like a P-38, which was a very famous airplane in World War II. Okay. And it's, they call it a spinner or a bullet nose. It doesn't really have a purpose other than just to make you go, <laughs> what the heck is that? It, well, it looks like a face. You know, you've got the yeah. eyes, the nose, and the mouth smiling. Okay, now you know what, Dave? What? You know why I'm here? I think you probably want to go for a ride. You know, Studebaker closed over 50 years ago. Uh, it left South Bend. It was a bad November. Uh, November 1963, that's when Kennedy was shot. Yeah. That's yeah. when Studebaker closed down in oh South my. Bend. And it's been, you know, almost 60 years. And, and why were they pushed out of business? Because well, they were number four. So they were behind the big three, GM, Chrysler, Ford. It was just hard to compete when you're number oh, four. Okay. And this car, this squeaky old car, uh, represents sort of the top in terms of production. So they made about 250,000 cars that year, which was the second highest, uh, one of the most profitable years for Studebaker. But they just couldn't keep it going, unfortunately. Oh, here we go. Okay, do you, do you have a horn? I do have a horn, you wanna hear yeah, it? Yeah, let's hear the horn. <laughs> it's pretty loud. Want more info or to contact Dave Arland, go to www.1951studebaker.com. This is one car ride I'll never forget. More Great Day TV coming up. As a Secret Service agent, Mr. New was assigned to protect former President Nixon. Thank you, Mr. New, for your courage and service. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Catherine has donated thousands of these stockings to our military men and women. Your donations continue to bring joy. Hi, I'm Quinn Buckner, a proud member of the American Senior Communities team. We are so honored to serve a generation that has really made a difference. 
Larry Howald of Howald Heating, Air Conditioning, Plumbing is passionate about keeping your house cool in the summer and warm in the winter. He's so passionate, Larry will do just about anything to earn your business. You know something else Larry is passionate about? Ping pong. You think you can beat me? Well, I'll give you $100 in Howald bucks if you can. For all your home's cooling, heating, and plumbing needs, call Howald for professional courteous service right away. Hey, at Howald Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing, coming home never felt so good. Carrier, turn to the experts. Did you know that even a newborn baby can wear hearing aids? And with the help of cochlear implants, even deaf children can learn to talk. Here Indiana is the one-stop shop providing speech pathology. Hearindiana.org. The sounds of family. Happy birthday! Congratulations. Today is your day. Cherish them with help from the audiologists at Whisper Hearing Centers. You can evaluate your hearing and manage your needs by combining their compassion and expertise with the most current technology. Call Whisper Hearing Centers today. The Skyline Club is open again for lunch and dinner, practicing social distancing and COVID-19 sanitation protocol. The chefs just rolled out a fabulous new menu. Rave reviews pouring in. Time to become a Skyline Club member. He's our multimedia journalist. He's also our tech talk guru. And what we love about Steve Schweitzer, well, we love everything about him, but when he goes on vacation, he brings back a story. Let's go with him now to North Carolina and kites. Hi, I'm Steve Schweitzer. I'm in coastal North Carolina at the Cape Fear Kite Festival. I'm here to reconnect with some friends from Indianapolis. And the reason I've got this kite is I want to pay homage to a master kite builder I met almost 40 years ago when I was a rookie photographer at Wish. This year, kite lovers had to brave overcast skies and wind so high it was tough to keep some kites aloft. I've loved them since I was a child buying the uh, 10 cent grocery store variety paper kites. That's my buddy Bill Shomo. Today, he's flying a Delta wing. Now, Bill lives in Cape Fear, but almost 40 years ago, he ran Windiana Kite Works at Keystone at the Crossing. And he's still a kid at heart. Nobody's ever had a nervous breakdown while flying a car. This festival began 14 years ago when a friend gave Mike Anger a little kite. That little kite led to a bigger one and a bigger one and a bigger one. And uh, then I got to, to travel around with different festivals, and so we decided we would do our own here. Over the years, the two-day festival has grown in popularity, with a reported 17,000 visitors last year. But I didn't drive 12 hours just to watch other people fly kites. The blue and white beauty my wife Sheila and I are flying was made for me by a master kite maker named Ansel Tony. His farmhouse workshop was in farmland, Indiana, but he's known around the world as the Kite Man. He was 91 when I met him four decades ago, and he sewed together this colorful patchwork in his kitchen. Then I can just go to that old sewing machine and just relax. Ansel started making kites in 1895, when he was six years old. In his 99-year lifetime, he made tens of thousands of kites that fly all over the world. It's fun to put them up in those clouds. I like to put them in the clouds. I run, run up in the clouds one day and run a buzzard out. I can honestly say that Ansel is the most memorable person I met in my 30 years of covering newsmakers. And I'm not the only one who cherishes his acquaintance. I was fortunate enough to meet Ansel uh, during my misspent youth when I was um, the proud owner of a kite shop in Indianapolis called Wendyana Kite Work. The only dark spot on today's horizon is that too many of the flyers are like me and Bill, with AARP cards in their pocket. This was the only future flyer I found with her own kite aloft. There's not that many young people that are into it, so we're kind of concerned about who's going to car keep carrying it on but uh, hopefully there'll be some younger people come along. Hopefully the next generation of flyers will be inspired by days like this, 
with cloud chasers filling the skies. I'm sure Ansel would have been fascinated by some of the man-made birds aloft today. And I know he would have been thrilled to see his own delta wing flying these coastal skies. He always said the delta was his favorite kite because it flies like a seagull. For Great Day TV, I'm Steve Schweitzer. Hi, Maria, what's up? Hi, I'm just calling to say hello. How are you? Great, it's so good to hear your voice. Staying connected has never been easier for people with hearing loss. Now you can read captions of everything your caller says with CapTel Caption Telephone. Did you hear that Ed finally proposed to Anna? People with hearing loss can enjoy the same ease, speed, and confidence as telephone callers everywhere. Learn more about this service at RelayIndiana.com. Family owned and operated. Best seafood and service in town. Four convenient locations bringing the best of the sea to ND. Dine in or carry out. Plus, we can make any order just for you. Kaplinger's Fresh Cats Seafood Market. It's a great catch. I'm Dr. Bill Beeson, and I'd like to help you look your very best. Beeson, the trusted name in cosmetic surgery. Medicine can add years to your life, but cosmetic surgery can add life to your years. So trust the best surgeon, Dr. Bill Beeson. I'm your realtor, Tony Osler, and I love helping people on the move. And Tony is my guy. The Osler Group with Remax Centerstone combines vast knowledge, many years of experience, in order to help you. Call me about your next move. And Tony is great. You're not alone. Millions of Americans face mental illness every single day. NAMI improves lives with resources to provide hope, recovery, and wellness. So reach out to NAMI. You are not alone. I definitely earned my mom points this year thanks to Santa Claus, Indiana. Staying next door to Holiday World meant we got to be there from open to close. But the fun didn't stop there. Santa Claus is just an adorable little town with festive stops all around. And you can even throw in a little history lesson on the very ground where Abe Lincoln grew up. This was our getaway worth sharing. Plan your Santa Claus getaway at visitindiana.com. Continuing with our 100th episode of Great Day TV, and we're going to take a look at a mural now, one of the first murals in the city, and it's in need of repair. And Joy Hernandez has the story. It's a familiar scene for many, a valley with Indianapolis's city county building on one side and a row of office buildings on the other. And for decades, a pop of color over a small parking lot. It would be the single most important public artwork in the city. It's a massive and, and sort of playful, architecturally transformative surface. Oh, everything was so gray around it, yeah. All this building next to it, so almost something very colorful. The mural is untitled, but often called the urban wall for the commissioned project that drove its creation. Untitled is still the best. Yeah, it, it's my fantasy. Yes, there's, there's nothing. If you put the title on it, then people look for it. Look, look for specifics. Austrian artist Roland Hobart designed the mural in 1973, one of the first to be painted in the city. Over the years, he's dodged and refused to explain its meaning, preferring to leave that to the viewer. Anything abstract is naturalistic, which does not exist. exist. It's, it's a new fantasy. There's a lot of truth in uh, the reason behind his not answering that question, because as soon as you define why that mural is interesting, it loses some of its power. There are some concepts that Hobart wants to get across, especially the themes of harmony versus disharmony. Harmony is uh, anything like this, and when, when uh, the inside is the same way, and disharmony is, for example, uh, anything you put out away from the, from the face of design. And here, for example, here, and then I a little more disharmony here, and a lot of disharmony there. It's been nearly 50 years since Hobart's mural debuted. <laughs> it's amazing how time goes, yeah. It's seen a few changes in that time. 
By the late 70s, water damage forced the removal of the mural from the second building, and today most people only know the mural as occupying one wall. It's so ambitious. It's, it's so many stories tall, and to know that it used to be twice as big and ten times as bright. Richard McCoy is behind the push to restore Hobart's mural so that the work retains its vibrance for future generations to enjoy. With the resurgence in murals and other public art in Indianapolis, it's only fitting, McCoy argues, for this mural to return to prominence. And there's been a kind of growing momentum, and I think it's, it's time that the community, and in particular the city of Indianapolis, takes ownership of this and, and really brings it back to life. Mayor Luger had, had a vision, and I, I do think it's really interesting that, that, that this was the beginning of utilizing the arts as a means of uh, bringing interest and prosperity to downtown. At the time of dawn, then you got more texture, uh, looked a bit better. Richard McCoy will continue on with his efforts to preserve Hobart's legacy. His thinking is just as relevant today as it was in 1973, and that the concerns that he had at that time are very similar to the concerns we have. An update. Roland Hobart passed away in October of 2020. His urban wall will live on. The mural is slated for full restoration as part of Indianapolis's bicentennial celebration once fundraising is complete. Joy Hernandez for Great Day TV. Are you looking for a new Ford or pre-owned car? One that fits you, your family, and your furry friends? We take the whole family into consideration when you need a Ford. Inski Ford has been serving you for over 60 years. We're family owned and operated, and our whole staff is ready to serve people and pets. We know what you need. From our family to yours, it's Inskeep Ford now and forever. Earning your trust and loyalty every day. Come see us at Inskeep Ford. The sounds of family. Happy birthday! Congratulations, today is your day. Cherish them with help from the audiologists at Whisper Hearing Centers. You can evaluate your hearing and manage your needs by combining their compassion and expertise with the most current technology. Call Whisper Hearing Centers today. Family owned and operated. Best seafood and service in town. Four convenient locations bringing the best of the sea to ND. Dine in or carry out. Plus, we can make any order just for you. Kaplinger's Fresh Cat Seafood Market. It's a great catch. The Skyline Club is open again for lunch and dinner, practicing social distancing and COVID-19 sanitation protocol. The chefs just rolled out a fabulous new menu. Rave reviews pouring in. Time to become a Skyline Club member. I create exceptional culinary experiences. I lead and mentor the team to provide the highest quality of care. I assist our residents throughout their day. I keep a clean and happy home. I provide person-centered care. Our diverse team of compassionate caregivers come together under one mission, to serve each customer with quality care and excellence. We are 1ASC. Join our winning team. Celebrating 100 episodes and we thank American senior communities, they've always been so good to us, one of our kind sponsors. And I got to visit one of their locations where Ruby is the mascot dog. Tell us the story. We're talking about senior living options here at American Senior Communities, and we're here with Jesse Friskney and Ruby. <laughs> and what is it? Tell us what do you do here at American Senior Communities. Uh, I'm a marketing specialist with our senior living division at American Senior Communities. Okay, and what's Ruby's job? Ruby's job is to be a resident pet for all of our residents. Oh. She likes to come around to some of our communities and say hi to everybody. And she is an English Bulldog? She is. Oh, she's gorgeous. Well, at American Senior Communities, we understand how important our pets are to us. Um, we consider them parts of our family, just like our residents do. So we encourage all of our new residents moving in with us to bring their furry friends with them, if at all possible. Um, and most of our pets do have fur, but we have been known to have a few resident birds or a bearded <laughs> lizard on occasion. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? So it just depends. You judge everything then on a case-by-case -case basis? Right, we do. Okay. I can imagine someone who is in the facility that needs constant care, they probably can't have a pet. 
Who can have a pet here then? Uh, well, we welcome pets at all of our senior living locations, and you can find out where those are located at our website. Okay, and that website is? ASCCare.com. All right, very good. So judging again on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. Have you seen some of the, the good that's come out of this? Yeah, I mean, it makes our residents' days brighter. It keeps um, them connected with their, with their pets. Um, and as you can see, um, pets always tend to bring a smile to everybody's face and everybody in a better mood. So yeah. everyone loves having them around. Yeah. Well, they keep us healthy, too. They do. I mean, staff and, and those residents mm -hmm. who are here as well. Yes. How, how old is Ruby? Ruby's seven. Seven? How, Ruby, how old is that dog? <laughs> oh, I, I shouldn't ask that. That's, don't ask a lady her <laughs> age. Oh, look at that. Yes. So you get to bring her. Isn't this great, too? Here's the other okay. added advantage. You get to bring her into work every day. I do, yes. She loves to visit, so she comes and sees some of our residents um, occasionally. She does. Okay. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that when some she's she's licking, look at the, you've got to get this. Yeah. Um, when someone brings their dog, especially a dog, uh, there's a place, is there a green area where they can go potty? We have a lot of green space at our senior living communities. Uh, we have lots of sidewalks. Um, and even some of our communities have um, are close to nature preserves and actual walking trails. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And then is there a deposit fee as well? Yes, we do collect a pet deposit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you collect poop deposits? <laughs> well, I think all that's kind of covered in the pet deposit, and we just ask that our residents pick up after their pets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know some places where they want a DNA to make sure they uh, pick up. Yeah. But you have good residents. They we all do. Pick up. We okay, do. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a, and I love Ruby. Do you think Ruby could come over and see me? She could. You want to go over could there? could you come see me? Yeah. Show how, come, you go come over, over here. here. Oh, can you come up here? Can you come up here? Come on, come on, come on. Do you mean help you get on. her up there? Come on. I, I'll help you, little butt. <laughs> I'll help you, little butt. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she wants to kiss you, too. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, she's <laughs> adorable. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. I would cry. Thank you, Jesse. American Senior Communities. And you can have your pet. Let everybody know. Okay, we're. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do I taste good? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more, so stay with us. I'm getting a bath. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hi, Maria. What's up? Hi, I'm just calling to say hello. How are you? Great, it's so good to hear your voice. Staying connected has never been easier for people with hearing loss. Now you can read captions of everything your caller says with CapTel Caption Telephone. Did you hear that Ed finally proposed to Anna? People with hearing loss can enjoy the same ease, speed, and confidence as telephone callers everywhere. Learn more about this service at RelayIndiana.com. Family owned and operated. Best seafood and service in town. Four convenient locations bringing the best of the sea to ND. Dine in or carry out, plus we can make any order just for you. Kaplinger's Fresh Cat Seafood Market. It's a great catch. I'm Dr. Bill Beeson, and I'd like to help you look your very best. Beeson, the trusted name in cosmetic surgery. Medicine can add years to your life, but cosmetic surgery can add life to your years. So trust the best surgeon, Dr. Bill Beeson. Mm. What are you doing? I was hungry, so I made myself a sandwich. You know, good people are hard to find these days, let me tell you. So turn to the experts with Carrier and Howald Heating and Air Conditioning. Carrier and Howald Heating. Give us a call today for all your heating, air conditioning, and plumbing needs. Remember at Howald Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing, coming home never felt so good. This year we decided to stay close to home for our summer getaway. Well, French Lick felt like we traveled worlds away. I'll never forget the kids' faces when they first met those beautiful creatures. And they were pretty impressed to stay at what they called the fancy French Lick Resort. Fancy, yet family friendly. So I guess we did stay close to home, but it was far from ordinary. This was our getaway worth sharing. Plan your French Lick getaway at visitindiana.com. He's a beloved meteorologist. Indiana loves him. Randy Aulis recently suffered from cancer and he beat it. And a few years ago, we talked about that. I went to his house and we had a wonderful chat. So let's take a look back. And yes, he's still cancer free. 
just a boy with dreams. In the beginning, those dreams were of sports, playing basketball and baseball. But he says when he was playing baseball, he kept looking up at the clouds rather than paying attention to the plays. And so it goes. Randy Aulis became a meteorologist in 1978. He worked in Wausau, Wisconsin for a year, then Dayton, Ohio for three years, then on to Indy and Channel 8 in 1984. It was for morning weather, a job he almost didn't take. You weren't sure when you started out in weather that you wanted to do mornings. You're a night guy. I'm a night, I really am. I'm a night person. You can ask my wife, Allison, about that. Um, when we were offered the job back in 84, when we started Daybreak, and we were the first station on the air with a morning newscast because of you. Wasn't it you and uh, who, who else was Athel it? Mika. Athel Micka. that's right. You, you did, I think, uh, was it an overnight newscast one year? Because it was a bad storm. A bad storm, yeah. and you stayed on all night. Yeah. And because of that, that got the morning news going. And uh, so I can blame you for my early schedule all these years here. Go ahead and blame me. But, no, does but at any rate, it was back in, uh, in 84, and I almost didn't take the job because I'm a night person. I love staying up at night. But in 2017, Randy was hit hard with health issues, even battling cancer. I'm pretty healthy normally, except last year. So it, it, last year before my cancer, it was about two months before that. Anyway, I had a gallbladder surgery. I had a gallstone, so I had emergency surgery the next morning on a Saturday. Four weeks later, I had a blood clot in my leg from the surgery. Right. And it was two weeks later that I was sitting at the computer over there and I felt the lump in my neck. But you hear the word cancer and what, you, what went through you your know, mind? You know, it, it was really weird. I, I could tear up too talking about this, but when we, when I felt the lump in my neck, and let me just say this too, you know, you need to get into the doctor right away because early detection can save lives. Early detection will save lives here. It was on a Monday, I went in, doctor looked at it and he says, you know, we need to get a biopsy done. We were telling jokes in his office. I mean, he was doing a one-liner, I was doing a one-liner, and I'm sitting there thinking, what if this guy says it's cancer and we're just clowning around? So anyway, he said, give me two or three minutes to look at this under the microscope, and he did it right there in the office. Oh my. And it got very quiet. <gasps> And he turned around and he said, you have cancer. And I thought, no, I don't. I said, I, you know how you just think it's always somebody else. But he said, no, you have cancer. And of course we were both fighting the tears and we heard that because as soon as you hear the words, you have cancer, your, your world is turned upside down. So I, I asked the doc, I said, what are my options? I said, well, what, what if I don't do anything? And he, says, he said, if you don't do anything, you'll be dead in a year. That's what he said, and I thought, well, that's not a good option. You had chemo, yep. you had radiation. Yes. Randy says he's also one of the few cancer patients who gained weight while undergoing treatment. He credits friend David Barris for his donut deliveries for that. Friends and family were there for him, and also his great faith. Randy Aulis has weathered it all. You think they noticed that we're having trouble with your mic? I don't know if they mic? could tell or not. We paused for about a minute. There. <laughs> Giving us a smile, even when the days are dreary. Thank you, Randy. We'll be back with more on Great Day TV. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 100 episodes, and we're not done yet. If you'd like to take a look at some of the stories, go to our website, and we'll see you next time on Great Day TV.